Hi guys, welcome to the Improved Garage. Uh, so today, we're gonna be working on the Mini again, my 2024 Mini Cooper Clubman. And these arrived today from Fitment Industries. So I wanted to show you kind of how they come packaged. So they come in a pair. Here's one pair, the other pair's there, I already unwrapped those. These ones I haven't yet. Um, so, I ordered wheels and tires for my car. And there are a couple of reasons why. Um, most importantly, I hate Continental tires. I've had nothing but bad luck with them. They're just awful. I end up with flats and problems and I've driven hundreds of thousands of miles in my life and every flat I've ever gotten was on a set of Continentals. Um, number two, the car comes with run flats from the factory. Run flats run like, they, they just ride like crap. They're awful. Um, so they're, they're not comfortable, they're noisy, they're just terrible tires. And I understand why they do that, because people don't know how to change tires, and they don't know how to check their air pressure, and they don't know how to do those types of things anymore, but that's not me. I want better tires. So I got myself a set of Michelin Pilot Sport 4s, um, and I got them on these wheels, which are Koenig Heliograms, and these are a bronze, finish and that's what they look like. So the wheels are an 18 by eight and a half. They're a plus 42 offset. Uh, what that means is um, they are 42 millimeters this way from center. So if, if they were mounted at center here, they would be at zero. Plus 42 means the mount is like here, which means that they suck in 42 millimeters from the center. Now, I did a lot of um, research and hemming and hawing around about fitment and sizes and what I wanted. Um, so let's, let's get this one around first. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out the right fitment for this car. And by fitment, I mean the wheel size, the tire size, and the offset. So those are a 225, 40, 18. And what that means is they're 225 millimeters wide at the top. They are 40% on the height, and they are 18 millimeters, or 18 inches in diameter, I don't know why some of them are in metric and some of them are in inches, but that's just the way it's always been. These are a 235 40 18. So they're slightly wider and they will be slightly taller because 40% of 235 is actually a bigger number. So the offset was the thing that um, I was trying to figure out for the longest. So on this mini here, I have 17 by seven wheels, and these are eight and a half inch wheels. Those are seven inch wheels. And I've got these at a plus 45 with a 15 millimeter spacer. So they're technically a plus 30 after the spacer. And I had to do that spacer to clear my brakes. On these wheels, these are an 18 by eight and a half. So they're an inch and a half wider, which means they're going to stick out three quarters of an inch more in this direction, but instead of doing a plus 45, these are a plus 42. And I think that these are the perfect fit for this car. Now, I ordered these from Fitment Industries. I've never ordered from Fitment Industries before. I usually order from the tire rack. And the reason that I did Fitment Industries in this case is because the tire rack didn't have the heliograms in this color, in this size. So they don't list them on their site. Also, tire rack only really allows you to order things that are like exact OEM fitment. So if there's any adjustment whatsoever, wider tires, wider wheels, different things like that, they tend to not let you buy it unless you call in and talk to somebody and you're like, yes, I understand. I, yes, I, yes, yeah, I, please, will, will you please just sell it to me? And then they will. But Tire Rack has fantastic service. They do great mounting and balancing. They, great job all around. So I looked at a couple other places. I looked at Discount Tire, I looked at Fitment Industries, I looked at a, a bunch of places, 1010 Tires. And I ended up deciding on these wheels and I 
pick them from Fitment Industries because they had them in stock and they do the whole thing and they mount in the balance and they ship them to you. So I spend about $2,200 on them, mounted balance shipped to my door. So that's a set of four Michelin Pilot Sport 4s. That's a set of four of these wheels, these Koenig heliograms. And that is TPMS sensors, the tire pressure monitoring sensors are already installed in here and these are ready to go on my vehicle. Now, when I ordered them, they reached out to me and they said, hey, we can't guarantee that these are going to fit on your car. And I understand because nobody modifies that car apparently. There are no pictures of any wheels on that car anywhere that I can find, except for some very, very specific like Oz wheels or, or certain ones like that. And the older cars are much more modified than the newer cars. And I, I guess I can understand because the life cycle impulse or LCI version of that car, which would be like a 2021 through 2024, 2020 through 2024, something like that. It's the last four years. That car's 50 grand. So for somebody to buy a JCW for 50 grand and then modify it right when they get it, like that's not an average person. People are buying that because it's a wagon to be a family car. So I, I get that. Um, but when we ordered these, when they checked with Koenig and Koenig said, they can't guarantee they're gonna fit your car. So I called Koenig and I talked to the person who in charge of fitment and he said, well, we don't have any measurements of the brakes that come on the JCW on our files. So we think they're going to fit, but we're not sure. Okay. So I ordered a single wheel, just a wheel, no tire, had it shipped to my door and I verified that it fit my car. I removed my front wheel, I put it on, I made sure it cleared the brakes, I made sure it cleared the shocks, I made sure it's going to fit well and everything's gonna be good. And then I said, okay, proceed with the order. They shipped me four more. I kept the fifth wheel because I just figured it would be nice to have a spare wheel. If one ever gets damaged, I've got one, I can just swap it out and take care of it. And you know, it, it was 200 bucks, 225 bucks, something like that. So. It, it wasn't a big deal for me to have it sitting on the shelf. I could have returned it if I wanted to, but you know, return shipping is going to be 30, 40 bucks on a wheel. And it's like, why, why take the hit? I, I'll just keep it as a spare. I mean, every car I've ever owned has had a damaged wheel at one point or another. This one, it's uh, I think it's that one in the back there. It's got a mark on it, but uh, just, it happens. One day you make a mistake and you screw up a wheel. Um, but, that's why I generally try to buy tires that are wider than the wheels so I get a little bit of rim protection. This rubber part here, it's not perfect. You hit a curb hard enough, it'll still ding your wheel, but it's better than nothing. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to clean these up. We're going to uh, put a ceramic coating on them and then we're going to get them fitted to the car so I can show you what they look like. And I think they're gonna look good. So my first impressions of Fitment Industries, um, their packaging was good. Uh, it took them a while because they don't actually have the wheels and tires in stock. They have to like order them in and then ship them to their warehouse and then build them. Um, I, tire rack tends to be faster in my experience, but you know, maybe I've just gotten lucky in the past. Um, but when you're on Fitment Industries website, they don't lie about it. They say that you're going to get your stuff on or around the 10th and today is the 10th. Like that's what they told me a month ago. So I can't say that they like lied to me in any way. Inside one of the wheels, you're going to find your wheel caps, which are right here. That's what mine look like. They are black coning and they can snap in here. We'll wait until the end to put those on, but there are four of them here. My um, TPMS sensors were installed from the factory. They sent me some stickers. And the one thing that I will say is I feel like their weight placement is a little messy. Like on this wheel, for example, it's right behind the spoke and you're definitely going to see that because um, it kind of is like right on this front face. The, those are all good. This one's great. Um, I'll probably, I have weights, I'll probably redo that one. All right, so here we are. This is the, um, this is a wheel stand. It's called the Source Garage wheel stand. Um, they used to sell these on Obsessed Garage. I guess the company went out of business or something along those lines and they don't make them anymore. But um, it makes doing like a wheel coating or cleaning really easy. Spins all the way around and then it 
You can also rotate the wheel, of course. So I've got, this is a rag company. It's called the Car Wash Towel. I like these. I use them as a general purpose towel. They work really, really well. I get them in different colors every time I buy them. So I just always know what my oldest ones are. Um, so I've got Car Pro Eraser here. And I also, or well, I've got Gion Prep here, which is like a nice isopropyl alcohol product. And I've got Car Pro Tarx here, which is more of like a tar and, um, you know, wheel cleaner. Or, uh, this is more of like a tar remover. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna clean the barrel of the wheel. Um, one thing that I will say is these are pretty clean. Like they obviously clean them after they mounted the tires, which is nice. Um, not everybody does that. Um, I've received many tires that were, or wheels that were covered in glue. So we're just gonna kind of go around, clean the whole thing. Make sure it's nice and clean. We're gonna get the lip. You can see here, 18 by eight and a half, 42 offset, five on 112, that's the lug pattern. Made in China. And then the Michelin tires, the Pilot Sport 4s. One thing that we should do at this point too is we should just make sure that like we got the right order, that things are right, that all four tires are the right size, that all four wheels are the right kind, you know, that that they're the right lug pattern and all of that. So we're just gonna go and check that really quick while we wait for this eraser to dry. All right, so we'll clean this off with the Gion Prep. Um, I'm also going to clean the tire itself. Um, we'll use a little bit of Tarx for that. Might wanna use a different rag, might be helpful, but the, um, this will kind of take the glue and adhesive off of the tire, which is more like crap left over from mounting the tire. Um, it's more of like an assembly lube. And I will say the source garage wheel stand works better when wheels are wide like this. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the face of the wheel Again, eraser, prep, spin this around, and we will just kind of get all of these pockets and things. I will say I really, really do like these wheels. I'm glad that they fit, and I'm glad that the uh, offset was right. Now we've got our wheel clean, our tire clean. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to ceramic coat the wheel. And to ceramic coat the wheel actually means to ceramic coat the wheel twice. Similar to how I did the car with Crystal Serum Light and then EXO. Um, when we do the wheel, we're going to start off with CarPro Deluxe. And then we're going to go over it with CarPro Gliss. Um, Deluxe is a heat resistant coating and Gliss is a topper. So I've got Deluxe here, small bottle. I've done a set of wheels and all of the plastic on the mini with this and I still have about half the bottle left. And I have one of these CarPro applicator sponges with a suede Car Pro applicator, which is what this is. Um, I really like these applicators actually, they work very well. So we're just gonna put a little bit on here like this, kinda drip, 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 drip. It's not coming out of the bottle too great, but. And all we're gonna do is we're just going to work on the face of the wheel. And by face, I mean barrel, because those are two different words. Also, you should wear gloves when you're doing this. That is a good idea. So you just kind of want to pick a starting point Work your way all the way around. 
Make sure you get the whole thing. So we gave this a couple minutes to flash and it gets, you know, kind of hazy and now you're going to buff it off with a rag like this one. This is the CarPro Pearl and the Pearl is just a very flat low, po low pile towel that is very good at removing coatings. So now we're going to get a little bit more. And this time we're going to do the back side of the face. It's so just the back of the spokes. Because remember in your first, you kind of got right up to the back of them. Kind of count in my head when I'm doing these. Bright side, these only have 10, so I don't have to count too high. And then we'll also take it and we'll do a ring right around the edge here, which is the other spot on the back side that we missed. And we'll give that a minute to flash and we will clean the back side of our spokes like that. And we will get the back lip like that. And then we can rotate this around. And the next thing you want to do is take the back side of this towel and just get all of the spokes. Just in case you ended up getting some on the edge, you don't want to see that. We'll do the spokes next, but you just want to be careful that you don't get extra on the spokes. So now we're going to do the front and you generally want to wear gloves when you're using this because the ceramic isn't good for your hands. Um, we'll put a little bit, I'm going to use this type of applicator. It's more of like a flat disc for the spokes. I find that it gets these a little bit better. And all we're going to do is we're just going to do a pocket like this spoke like this. And we're going to go to the next one. We're just going to kind of do a section like this. All right. And at this point I've gone quite a bit. I started here and I got to here and um, it's taken me a minute. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to remove, buff off, make sure that I'm not leaving anything behind. I just want to make sure that I don't end up with high spots because normally on a car you would buff out a high spot, but on a wheel you can't really do that because you're going to end up messing up the finish of your wheel. So I started here, I ended here and you can kind of feel the difference. Like this is, this is slick. This is not, you know, and you can kind of tell what you've done and what you haven't done. Okay. So now just keep going. All right. Now we'll buff this section off. And 
and the amount of time that you're going to be able to let this go is going to kind of vary based on your temperature, your humidity, all of that kind of stuff. Today it's like mid 60s, humidity's not bad, I'm not out in the sun. So there we are. This wheel is done with the first coat of Deluxe. Now remember, we're going to do another coat of Gliss, but we're going to let this dry. So we've done our coat of Deluxe and we've wiped off the excess with our pearl. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to just denib the tires. So we'll remove the little rubber things on at least the outside of the tire. Um, in my experience, this is a Michelin thing. I don't remember buying a lot of other tires and having nibs all over them, like my hand cooks and stuff, but uh, pretty easy to do. Just kind of pull on it, tap it with a knife. I do like this wheel stand. It honestly only really does one thing and it's this, but it does it very well. So but every car I own has two sets of wheels and tires with the exception of this. The Honda does, the Mini does, Southern Mini does, the Miata does, even though it's not my car. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to allow this to cure for between one and two hours. So we're going to let it cure and dry, and then we're going to come back. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a coat of Gliss. So this is another CarPro product. You apply it the same way, put a little bit on an applicator and put it on the wheel. Um, you want to let the Deluxe dry for between one and two hours before applying this. And really this is a topper that is designed to add some extra gloss and a little bit of added durability, more so like a sacrificial layer. The Deluxe is stronger and it has a high, higher heat tolerance than this does from my experience, but this um, is designed to be the layer that gets worn off. Um, so the, you know, the Deluxe is really the base protective layer that stays stuck on. So we let this get to the point that it kind of gets a little hazy. Again, CarPro Pearl. We're gonna wipe the whole wheel. Then I usually flip the towel over, wipe again. Make sure you get the lip and then a little bit more, we'll do the back side of the spokes. Now we spin it around and we're going to do the fronts. So I'm out of those little round applicators. I like those better for doing the spokes but you can fold one of these in a square and you can just kind of do it with that. The big pad doesn't really work well for these kind of uh, two stage spokes. So every time I do this, I'm just kind of counting, I'm counting the 10, right? And just kind of quickly look for streaks. A little bit more on there. And we'll get the face of the spokes. And we will get in this pocket.
and then we'll do the center. Now at this point, usually I'm on like my last quarter of the rag. So we'll wipe this out. And then usually right at the end, I'll grab a new rag, a fresh one. And I'll just kind of hit the whole thing again. Just kind of get all of these little pockets. And then just kind of spin it around, go over it one last time on the back, and we're good. Now all of these ceramic towels, I'm throwing those away when I'm done. Uh, they, they get loaded up with the ceramic, the ceramic gets hard, it has the ability to scratch your car. You could use it for things like general cleaning, you know, if you wanted to wipe a dirty floor or clean up a mess or something like that, but I, I don't, I just toss them out when I'm done. These are like 14 bucks for 12 of them, so they're a little over a dollar a piece. And I had a 12 pack when I started. I have six left. So I used six towels to get this wheel done. Plus the, uh, I used two of the car wash towels that I showed at the beginning. So now that I'm done, the very last thing that I want to do is we're going to add some air. So this is my Milwaukee inflator. Um, there are many air inflators out there. I really like this one. It's an M18, uh, 2848-2 with a 2848 It has a memory setting, so it's at 42, which is this car. I'll just back it down to 38, which is what this one's supposed to be. Pull this cap off, and uh, this works really well. You just kind of screw it on. And it'll say here the current pressure, 34.5. Press the button. It goes a little past it, and then it'll stop. And this little target light will blink. Um, so sometimes it'll go to 40, and then it'll come back down and it'll show like 37. Well, that target light will blink, and then it'll inflate again, and it'll go to, you know, 40 again, and then it'll let go, and you'll see it go down to 37 and a half, and then a little target will blink, and then it'll go up and go back down. It might inflate three or four times to fill up your tire, and that's fine. It just depends on the tire and the valve stem and how much it can flow and all of that kind of stuff. But anyway, pretty simple. Works really well, so I use it quite a bit. All right, so we're going to install our wheels and tires. So here we have the front passenger side of the Mini. I've got a um, torque wrench. This is a well, 250 foot pound torque wrench. So it's set to like 110, which is about what the factory torque spec is. And we're just gonna loosen up these wheels. While this is still on the ground. And obviously you can use a gun for this if you want to. Um, I'm just kind of doing it by hand. And I'm using a jack today, not the quick jacks. Nothing wrong with the quick jacks. I just don't need to get them out for this. So on BMWs, um, you don't have a lug with a nut. Instead, you have a stud, this, or a bolt, I guess, would be the better way to describe it. Um, so 
There are a couple of companies that make these hangers. They're kind of nice, especially when your brakes are big. Um, so you just kind of screw this into the top hole. And I actually have a couple of them, so I could get more than one hole if I wanted to, but you really only need one. So take these five out. And now we can pull this off. Now you'll notice that I didn't lift it very high. And that was purposeful. Um, you don't have to lift it to the moon. And, you know, honestly, the, if you pull it out flat, you don't have to worry about, like, whacking it on this and scratching the rims and stuff like that. But there you can see the factory Brembos. These are four piston Brembos, two on the front, two in the back. It has, um, there's two bleeders, one here, one here. Um, I've done a brake service on this before, so if you have any interest in that, you could check it out. I did it on my other Mini Cooper, but they're the same brakes. So we'll get this out of the way. So here we have our wheel and tire. And the, um, the Pilot Sport 4s are not directional, but there are some tires that are. If they do, they'll usually have an arrow on this side, which would be the outside. Um, so these just say outside and inside. They're not actually directional. So line this up, slide it in. And there we are. Now, when you buy new wheels and tires, they will come with new lugs. These did as well. The seats on aftermarket wheels are often different than the seats on OEM wheels. So if you look at this lug nut here, you'll see the taper on the bottom near my palm. And that taper is a specific um, type of seat. And usually factory wheels have an acorn, not a taper. Now on this car, it's not that way because the factory wheels are like almost an aftermarket wheel to begin with. Um, so on many cars, you cannot reuse your lugs, and that's why they will send you new lugs. On this car, I got new lugs, but they use a, they're a small diameter, and they've got a key in, and you can see a little bit of the silver around them, so I'm not crazy about them. So I'm just going to use the factory lugs, which actually have the right seat on this car. And all I'm doing here is just kind of starting these by hand. I'm going to get them as tight as I can by hand. Pull out our guide. And then we will give it just a little bit of torque. And then we will drop this down. And torque this. There we are. So you can see the wheel for the first time. Uh, and there it is with the center cap. So you guys will have to let me know what you think. There it is. I think it looks great, honestly. Really like the green. I really like the wheels. 
I think they're a great fit for the car. So I'm going to do the last one off camera and then I'll kind of show you the entire car and what it looks like. All right, guys. So what do you think? I think it looks great. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take it for a spin. We're going to make sure that it rides okay. Uh, we're going to get the TPMS sensors programmed in the car. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, it's actually very easy. You just click reset and it reads them and does its thing. But I think it looks great. You're going to have to comment down below what you guys think. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's an awesome, awesome car. All right, so I'm going to show you how to program TPMS. So in your middle here, you're going to go to menu, brings up this menu. Um, you're going to kind of go all the way to the left, go down to mini. Uh, go to vehicle status, then you're going to go to, to the left and go to, it says to measure tire pressure drive off. So let's try it. I did a lap or two, but it didn't show. So I'm going to try this. If you go to tire settings on the same page and you click on perform reset, now let's drive okay there we go that's what I was looking for so I had to do this on my last mini the f56 and this percentage kind of goes up but it takes a little while to start moving and then it moves very quickly so I'm gonna do another lap these laps are one mile and then I'll come back I've got about a quarter of a mile now it's starting to um, count up so it says 10% So I did about two and a half miles. You can see my pressures there. I set them all at 38, so 38, 37, 37, 37. And tire pressure minder active, so we are good. Um, so at this point, that's really it. Um, I'm gonna take this for a ride around like on a 60 mile an hour speed and just make sure that the tires are balanced and that everything feels good. Um, and then tomorrow, this is going for PPF. So then I'll be able to drive it, which is kind of nice. Pretty excited about that. So thank you for watching this series. I realize it's a long video. Hopefully it helps people out. Uh, have a great day. Hey guys.